Welcome everyone to beautiful Lake Fork, Texas. It is March 19th, which can mean only one thing. It is crappie fishing season. It is even crappie fishing weather. We've got slightly overcast skies, a little bit of sunshine. HGH and Dylan Gossett with Redline Guide Service. He's gonna show us how to catch some pre-spawn crappie. We're gonna be doing a little bit of uh, live scoping, finding them on brush piles. It's a little bit of adverse conditions. Um, kind of had a cold night last night. It got down to 40 or a little bit below. So we weren't in too big of a hurry to get out here today, let the lake warm up a little bit. It's just after lunch, we had some delicious sandwiches and now we're gonna catch some delicious slabs. I was trying water. to find some, at least some foot and a half water that I could, you know, just sit up on. Like with some vegetation? Yeah, just right on the edge of it. Or if we find some mats like this, we'll pitch down in there. Kind of on this like creek line? Yeah. So they can move in and out of shallow water. Or... We're out here crappie fishing and we're talking about deer more than anything, so. We just moved from a creek, didn't have very much success water might have been too shallow at the mouth or something. Well, why well, wasn't there? You got any ideas why there might not have been fish there? I, I just don't think there was enough depth to that creek. Uh, I know there's fish out here. We're fishing about 10, 11 foot of water right now. There's a lot of pre-spawn. There's some that have already spawned out here to just, because crappie don't have to go in foot, two foot of water to spawn. They'll spawn out here in 10 foot of water. Just on and trees and vegetation. Trees and, right off the bottom. Um, and since live scope, you've seen that, and you'll catch those bigger females just sitting on bottom or on trees and stuff like that. We also got the water temperature's a little bit warmer here. It says 58. We're, does that help us any? I mean, we were in 55 degree earlier. Yeah, it was a little colder over there. Maybe make them a little arm. bit more active here. Yeah, it's probably a little better. Um, I think this arm has been about 58 degrees, so it hasn't really changed over here compared to that shallow water because we fished some shallow water up there that was 55 this morning mm -hmm. and so yeah. that water's starting to warm up as the day goes on we've had some sunlight so that's helped yeah you know when i was a kid we used to always fish under those east texas turkeys over there they roost <laughs> yeah see those big nests right there they don't gobble like the regular ones do they don't they, they sure don't taste as good either that's what i've heard i like a good like chartreuse um that's always been my go-to Right now, I don't think the color matters that much, just because if you get that bait pretty close to him, they're gonna eat it. Um, he's got a, a white pink. Um, it's a beaver bottom bait, so it's got a flat like paddle tail. Pretty good bait. And we're bo both using quarter ounce weights. Um, I've got a G Daddy right here super tough i'll fish with this same one for probably a couple weeks before i can change it out um, they just last a long time but the water's kind of dirty over here so something like a white and chartreuse is going to help i'm looking for something just big enough but it's it's going to be circular it's going to be round and um, of course there's going to be a lot of fish moving today but that fish is just kind of that looks like a frying pan almost down there. Yeah, it's gonna be really, if it's anything, if it's longer than it is wide, then it's probably not gonna be a crappie. There's one sitting on the base of that tree. done. Y'all might go hungry. Be a lot better than that turkey tank kitchen.
So I always, springtime, I always use a heavy weight um, just because size, those bigger fish, it's not gonna matter if it's 16th and eighth or a quarter ounce head. Um, they're gonna eat those big baits right now. And I use a, I use a bullet weight above my jig just because I've noticed for a lot of people it's hard to see if it's just just your jig head but if you've got something above that as a reference you can kind of pick it up on the screen a little bit better um, and I use t a tungsten weight just because it's a lot heavier metal it's harder so it's going to show a, a really bright return so it just helps with seeing mainly and we're fishing 10 foot of water so you're going to you're gonna drop it down there faster before they spook because you're gonna have some spooky fish this time of year. It's just gonna happen. And that's part of the reason we use these 13, 14 foot rods. That way we can get out there before we spook them. So, pull it, pick up on it. There you, you, got, you had him. Oh, that was a big fish. <laughs> he had him. I think he's already pooped it out. Oh, yeah, that was a... That was a good one. That was probably about a two and a half. Two and a quarter. <laughs> it was. It was it a was, big fish. It, it felt good. It, the, lock, the, the rod loaded up. I just, I just waited too late. Yeah, a lot of times with that weight, I couldn't feel it. Like well, I, yeah. So I never felt the initial. Sometimes a hit. lot of weights on that, so you don't. You may not feel it. Yeah. Kind of ease up. Is that him right there? There he is. Ooh. Woo. That's what I'm in. That's my fish. That's my fish. <laughs> if you get your trolling motor turned up all the way, you're mm -hmm. cruising, and that boat's just slapping that water. They'll pick up on that, and they'll spook every time. Um, you try and come in real nice and easy. I try to extend my my range up to about 40 foot, and if I see a fish, that's probably a big old gar right there. He just runs like that. Let me see. There he is. That's a big old gar. Probably about a two and a half foot gar. Don't tell my dad, please. <laughs> you sucker. So guys. Dude, he ate it, man. Redline guide service. Only guide I've ever hired. Out just flat out just count every fish in the boat. <laughs> Never even, <laughs> never even slowed up. It's impressive. If you want a good show. I'm all about, you know, leading by example. Yeah. This whole area from the power lines all the way over here is just eight to 10 foot. But that creek runs through here. It goes around that point and it just runs all the way up to the bridge. And so it's just a good staging area for these fish to either, you know, eat or spawn it's just a good spawning flat this time of year for those those bigger females how much does it cost to buy a bite where's kc i don't know uh there you go sometimes sometimes when you drive a two-stroke boat motor without two-stroke oil in it you don't go very fast and <laughs> so uh or very far Get ready. See him moving? Get ready. He's coming up after. Got him. Oh, that's a good one. Swing him up here. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good fish. <laughs> I need pliers for that one. You made sure he was going to eat. Yeah. The pink. Man, oh, pink. I saw him flash on the screen and that rod got heavy. Woo! Redline guide service yeah. out here on Lake Fork. Look at that belly. My goodness, look at that, Dylan. Yeah. About to spawn. Yeah, about to pop. Yeah. Man, on a tree, 10 foot of water. That's awesome. Wanna weigh it? Yeah. HTF, Hunter the Fisher. Slab Daddy. What do you think, Dylan? I tell you what, if you guess right, you get to keep the boat. <laughs> Gosh, 220. No. No? 191. Here. <laughs> yes! Four. Record! Five. Um, double check. 
Yeah, 190. Heck yeah. Good fish for anyone. Mm -hmm. Make some fillets. Here we go. Give me the old. Jimmy Houston, everybody. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Hold on, I gotta get up a lot slower. Oh. There's three different modes, forward, down, and perspective, which is looking this way. Forward mode, it's like this. So wherever that, the head of that trolling motor is pointing, that's where kind of where we're looking right now. The best thing to do is to get the trolling motor the way you want it, where you see that fish the brightest, the best return, and that's how you know you're, you're looking right at that fish. And then just put it right on. That's another re reason we use heavy weights, because you can just swing that rod over and then you're right by that fish. Because even though it looks like you're right by it, you could be three foot away from that fish. Um, and that just, you may not be in that strike zone that that fish has. Um, we've got markers right here. It's got five, 10, 15, 20, you know, five foot increments. And when I'm looking for fish, you know, I'll go all the way up to 40, 50 foot. Um, of course, the closer you are in, the better quality you're gonna see that fish. Um, and then when I get close to a fish, I'll, I'll bring it down so that you can see it a little bit better. I just kind of, I'm constantly changing my settings throughout the day. If it's a lay down, uh, just pole timber. If they're holding on it, nine times out of 10, you'll be able to catch them this year, this time of year. Hey, we're probably gonna be back out here on Lake Fork again. Uh, what do y'all think? What what color should we use here in a couple weeks? Give us some give us some ideas, some comments. What works for you in your area? Better say pink. Pink. Should have got a pink boat. <laughs> he just laughs. <laughs> Put it right through there, just like that. If you're real good, you put it right in the tip of your finger. Then you can test your blood sugar afterwards. Oh, okay, I'll catch him real quick. Hold on a minute. Okay. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. I'll catch him real quick. What's this? <laughs> What's this, guys? What's this? I'm the guy. What's this? Oh. Right above him, come up some. Oh, he turned on him. There oh, it is. Got him. Got him. Get him up here. Oh, <laughs> goodness. Oh, oh, my gosh. Dude, that was going to be the biggest of the day. <laughs> Well, I saw him. <laughs> what, what was he? Three? No, he's two. Gosh. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're only nine foot of water, so you said the hook just bring him on in. I know, but man, he pulled down. <laughs> like, I couldn't get the rod up. That's what I was saying, because I had it, I was short shafting it like this. <laughs> I was like, That is too cool. That's another tote. <laughs> Pretty good crappie there. Big old fat crappie. I gave you a chance, Hunter. Yeah. I hope somebody else finds this tutorial video helpful. Because uh, I tell you, the in-person training just isn't going very well. <laughs> There he is. What? I didn't even see that fish. No. Oh, gosh, that's not him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw this move. No. Ten -inch close. Box it up, boy. There's those loins you were talking about. Box him up. Send him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. 
Here's nine inches. <laughs> Isn't that him? If anybody else got a hat like this, let us know. I bet you don't. <laughs> swam with it. <laughs> he swam out there and got it, didn't he? I saw him swimming. The boat control portion is the hardest that thing to be really good at. You always want to go into the wind, but the wind's going to tell you how fast you need to set your troll motor at because you don't want to just barrel through here and, you know, mess up all these fish, but that is the hardest part is getting the boat control down. That's why a lot of people go put their transducer on a pole because it's easier for them to, to use. To turn the pole, find the fish, and then go to the fish with yeah, the trolling motor? Yeah, because you can get within like 10 feet and hit your spot lock but you can turn your pole and you can fish way over here way over there it's a lot easier for a lot of people Got him. That's a good one. Cool. Now let's take a look at it on the way up oh right there go past him oh here he comes there you go. Good one. Go <laughs> oh, catch him. Put the glove on, son. You got him? Yeah. Get that other one. <clears throat> go. Y'all found a couple of eggs. If I'm not sure if I got a bite and they're just holding it, but you didn't feel anything, I always just lift up with the rod. If you feel a little bit of weight, just go ahead and set the hook. That's kind of like the one you had mm -hmm. earlier. I mean, he had it in his mouth. You could see it, but I couldn't feel it. It was just hard to, you just could you just didn't know until you, you put a little weight on him. Hey, make sure and subscribe because this is the first of a three-part series. We did the pre-spawn today. We're going to do the spawn and the post-spawn. And hopefully, those tactics will help you put fillets in your freezer throughout the year. It'll be a complete crappie fisherman at the end of this whole thing. Also, if you are interested in going and checking out Dylan's guide service, his contact information is below. He will put you on fish if you want to go. It's Redline Guide Service. Good dude. One of Hunter's friends. And we were glad to have him take us out. Remember, this is your element. Live in it.